Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial Series. So far in this series, we've built a CRM application complete with a CRUD view where we can list and edit contacts and a dashboard view where we can see stats. We've even turned the application into a progressive web application that can be installed. Now, before we take this application into production and deploy it to the cloud, we need to talk about one thing, and that's testing. So when it comes to testing software, we typically like to talk about three different types of tests. Unit tests, where we test a small piece of business logic in isolation. Integration tests, where we test several methods or classes together. And end-to-end -end tests, where we exercise the entire application from the browser all the way down to the database. In this video, we'll talk about the first two types of tests, unit tests and integration tests. And then in the next video, we'll cover writing end-to-end -end tests and exercising the entire application. Now, before we get started with this video, I want to warn you that there's quite a bit of code in this one. So be sure to check out the text version that we have up on Vaughn.com so you can find all the code there and you can copy paste it. So instead, when you're watching the video, just try to pay more attention to what it is that we're actually trying to do so that when you replicate it on your own, you'll understand what's going on. So with that said, let's get started. So far, our entire application has been focused around this main folder in our source. Now that we're writing tests, we're going to explore this other folder here called the test folder and everything that's underneath it. There are a couple of tests here from before, from the starter that we downloaded, and we can go ahead and just delete these because we won't need them. Now, the first test that I want to write is a unit test for the contact form. So let me open up the main source folder here, just so we can use that as a reference for the for the path that we're trying to create here. So when we're testing this contact form, we want to have our test in the same package as this class. That way we have access to these package protected fields. So in here, let's create the same folder structure. So we'll go ahead and create a new package. And then we'll just use the same package that we have up here. If you want to be sure that you get it right, you can just copy paste it. So create a package like that. In here, we'll create a new class, create a new Java class, and we'll call this one contact form test. So usually we like to use the class name plus test as a convention. All right, so let me use a little bit of pre-baked code here. And here for the before annotation, we're going to use the org J unit import instead of the aspect J, just make sure that you get the right one. So what we're doing here is we're setting up some test data. So the method here annotated with a before annotation will get run before each test. And here we create a list of companies and a contact that we know so that when we write the tests, we have known uh, results that we can assert that are true. Now, the first test that we want to write is one that asserts that all the fields get populated with the correct data from this contact that we have. And here, import the org j unit assertion. Now, what's happening here is that we create a new contact form. We pass in the array of companies that we created here in the setup data method. We set the contact to this known user. And after that, we assert that the name is equal to the first name fields value, the last name is equal to the last name fields value, and so on for each field. That way we know that if this test passes, all of those values from the contact got shown correctly in the form. Okay, so that takes care of half of the form's functionality. The other half is saving. So let's do a test that tests that the save works the right way. Now this is a slightly longer test, but let's take a look at what's happening here. So again, we create a form, we populate it with a new contact. So this time we're using an empty contact. We populate the fields inside of the form itself. So inside the UI class, we populate the values to known values. We use an atomic reference to save the value that we get back from the save event so that whenever the form gets saved, 
will store the contact that got passed in that event. We click Save in the form, and then we fetch the saved contact from this atomic reference. So now that we've programmatically gone through the form, so we've set all the values, we've clicked Save, we can now go ahead and assert that the correct values were actually populated in the saved contact. So we can make sure that the first name, last name, email, and so on, all got populated correctly. Okay, so it's time to run the test. The easiest way to do that is to right click on the test class and select run. And here you can see that both of our tests passed. So our form fields got populated correctly when we passed in a populated object. And likewise, if we passed in an empty object and filled in the form manually, we got the right values populated in that object when we saved. Okay, so that was a unit test. We tested the contact form in isolation without any connections to any other classes or anything else. Now let's take a look at a slightly more complex test where we actually want to try test the integration of a couple of different parts. Since we are in a Spring application, we want to test classes that use auto wiring and other Spring features. So for that, let's add a dependency in the POM file. The dependency that we're adding is the Spring Boot Starter test dependency. It's scoped to the test uh, scope, and we exclude the vintage version of JUnit. Okay, so now that we have the dependency here, either make sure that your IDE is set to automatically download dependencies or go to your Maven plugin here and run the install target here to make sure that you get those dependencies installed. Once you have them installed, go into the same package and create a new Java class. This class will be called list view test. You'll see this is a slightly different looking class. So we have the run with annotation with Spring Runner and a Spring Boot annotation here. So those two make this class Spring Managed, for instance, allowing us to auto wire in this list view. For that to work though, we need to add a component annotation on this class. So normally Vaadin will take care of instantiating this and making sure that things like auto wiring work. But since we're trying to have Spring instantiate this, we need to tell it that it's a component that Spring can in instantiate. Also, we need to go and make these uh, fields package accessible. So we'll remove private finals here just to make sure that they are package local in access so that when we're in the test package, in the same package, we're able to access them. Okay, now that we have the stub test here, let's right click on the package containing both of those tests and select run. What this will do is it will run all the tests within this folder or this package. And what you'll notice is that whereas our first unit test got run really quickly, this list view test took a while to get started. That's because Spring needed to get started and do all the auto wiring and stuff. So the cost of running these uh, Spring Boot tests is that you get a slightly higher overhead per test. In the text version of the tutorial, we have a link to some further reading that can teach you how to optimize the startup time if you have a lot of these tests. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this form shown. And what we're doing here is, first of all, we get hold of the grid from our list view. Then we use this helper method here to get the first item in the data grid. So if we look at this, what we are doing is we're getting the first item here. Then we assert that when the list view gets created, the form is invisible because we don't have a uh, we don't have a contact selected. We then select the first value, and we verify that the form is visible. Finally, we assert that the correct contact got bound to that form. So what we're checking is that when somebody selects this first contact here, the form gets shown and the right values are populated in that form. Our unit test for the form already verified 
that the correct values get populated. So it's enough for us here to just make sure that the right bean got uh, bound to the binder. Again, let's rerun these. And there you have it. So the test passed. We can now verify that the, the list view works as intended and the contact form works as intended. Now in the next video, we're going to take a look at writing end-to-end -end tests where we actually launch a browser and run the entire application as if a user was using it. So all the way from the browser to the backend. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications so that you get notified whenever that video comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.